In this tutorial, we're going to learn to knit Magic Loop Toe Up Socks, which is really one of my favorite ways to knit socks. Toe Up is definitely my favorite, and I go back and forth between double pointed needles and using Magic Loop for my favorite. Um, if you want to follow along with the pattern we're using here, it's available for purchase and download over on my website, and I've given you a link in the video description just below the video. A unique thing about this pattern is for the first time ever, I include sizes for the whole family, men, women, and kids, and these are the men's socks. Um, one of the benefits, so I'll tell you the benefits to both Toe Up and Magic Loop. The benefit to Toe Up that I like the most is that you can use all of your yarn, no leftovers. Because you start at the toe, you knit the most important part of the foot first, the foot, and then you use up the rest of the yarn on the cuff, making it however long you can with the amount of yarn you have. And I like to not have leftovers, so that's important to me. And then Magic Loop, instead of using short double pointed needles, you know, a set of four or five, you use one long circular needle. And because you're not using several needles, you don't have to readjust every third or every quarter of the stitches. Half the stitches are on one cord and half are on the other, which makes it less fiddly. So I think this is a really great way to knit socks and I'm excited to teach it. Please keep in mind that this is a tutorial. We're using worsted weight yarn and much bigger needles than you would normally use to knit socks. Sock yarn is really fine and we normally use really tiny needles to knit that. We're using bigger yarn, not this big of needles. These are just my sample needles, but um, this is so you can see what you're doing really easily. You learn the techniques, and then you can move on to other toe-up patterns and knit them magic loop style without any problem. It's easy to adjust any toe-up sock pattern to magic loop method. So first up, we're going to get started with the provisional cast on and the short row toe. Because these are toe up socks, we're going to start at the toe and it's really unique the way this whole thing is put together. We start with a provisional cast on and that allows us to work normally like we do from a cast on, we cast on and work one direction, but then we're also able to unzip the provisional cast on we stitched in and knit the other direction as well. And that's going to be right at the center of the toes going this way. You don't have to understand it to be able to work it, but that's how it's going to go. Um, everything that you need is listed on my webpage and in the pattern, but we're going to start with a crochet hook and some scrap yarn in a color different than what you're using for the socks. So let's get started with the provisional cast on toe. Here is a finished pair of the man size socks. We're going to start here with the provisional cast on and work our way around this way and then knit the foot and pretty much work the same, uh, the same short row so that we did for the toe here for the heel and then knit the cuff until we're out of yarn. Okay. Now for this example, I'm using bulky yarn and a much bigger crochet hook than I recommend for the pattern. This is just so you can really see what I'm doing. The very first thing I'm going to do is to tie a knot in this yarn, a knot that I can feel. That's the whole purpose of it is so I can feel it. Then I'll tie a slip knot a little ways up from there. I want to be able to identify easily which side is the slip knot side. Here I'm going to use my crochet hook and we're going to do some just crochet chaining to start the cast on. Um, if you've never done this before, you want to have your left hand pinch your fingers always pinching low close to the um, bottom of that last loop. You grab it and pull it through grab it and pull it through, up from under like that. This is just a basic cro crochet chain. And you'll follow your pattern for your size to tell you how many you need to chain. I have not been counting, but a couple more should do me. And I need scissors. Okay. Break the yarn and pull that last loop through. Now, a crochet chain, when you look at the front of it, it looks like a cast on row or a bind off row. It's a bunch of V's. But if you turn it over to the back, 
you have what most people call the spine of the crochet chain, or what I always call hyphens. <laughs> That's what they look like to me. Little horizontal loops like this that aren't touching each other, but you can see them there. Now this is when you need your knitting needles and your actual sock yarn. Starting with the end where the slip knot is, and you know where that is because you tied a little knot there, put your needle through one of the hyphens, and you want to attach your yarn. Just fold your yarn over, making a loop, wrap it around the needle, and pull it through. Go into the next hyphen, wrap it and pull it through. This is like knitting with one needle. And do your best not to split any stitches. Go cleanly in. and wrap it and pull it through. It'll be harder to get the provisional cast on out if you split stitches. I'm splitting this here. I'm going to do my best not to. Sometimes I find that using a more blunt ended needle when I'm picking up this row is easier because sharp needles are more likely to split the stitch. Okay. Now that I've picked those up, those look good, I'm just going to purl back across these stitches before we start the short rows. And we're just using this circular needle for flat knitting right now. We're not knitting in the round yet. Okay. Now we're ready to start the short rows, and this is where the magic starts. Knit across to the last stitch. And I'm going to do what's called a wrap and turn. It's a little different on this very last stitch to work it, um, or at least that's how I like to do it. Pull the yarn forward between the two needles, slip that stitch from the left needle to the right, turn the work. Make sure your yarn's coming around the front like this, slip that stitch back, and then purl back across the rest of the stitches. And when you pull that yarn around, you'll see it wraps the base of that stitch. That's the wrap. Then you purl back across to the last stitch. Whoops, last stitch. Okay, then you pull the yarn back between the two needles, slip that stitch, turn your work, and make sure the yarn's coming around the outside like that. Slip that stitch over to the right needle and knit across to the second stitch from the end. Okay, now this is more like the, how the rest of the wraps are going to go. Forward between the two needles, slip that stitch, back between the two needles, slip that stitch back over to the left needle. Turn your work, purl back across to the second to the last stitch.
back between the two needles with your working yarn, slip that stitch, forward between the two needles, slip that stitch back, turn your work. And I'll show you that one more time. Because I'm using this big bulky yarn, I'm not following the numbers for the pattern. We're only going to wrap three stitches on the outside. So I'm three stitches from the end now. Pull the working yarn forward between the two needles, slip that stitch, back between the two needles, slip the stitch back over to the left needle, turn the work, and we'll do the same thing on the purl side to the st third stitch from the end. Back between the two needles, slip that stitch, forward between the two needles, slip it back. Okay, your pattern will have you wrapping more stitches than this, but this is what we're using here for the sake of example. And we're already starting to get something that is acting kind of toe-shaped. It's going to become much more clear now. So now we're going to pick up those wraps. I'm going to knit over to the third stitch from the end, the last stitch that I wrapped. And this is all clear in the pattern. And if you take a close look at this stitch, there is a horizontal bar running just underneath the base of the stitch, and that's the wrap. What I want to do is put my needle in there and pick it up and put it up on the needle with the stitch. And then I want to knit those two together. And then I'm going to wrap this next stitch, giving it a second wrap. Forward, slip, back, slip, turn the work. Now we're going to pick up a stitch on the purl side. I have a lot of cord flopping around here that I'm not using yet. We will be using it soon though. This part is not even really magic loop yet. Okay, I want to pick up this first wrap on the purl side, but I really want to make it look nice on the knit side. So I'm going to turn the work like this and find the wrap. It's the horizontal bar that doesn't match up with the rest of the stitches. Pick it up, put it on the needle, and wrap the, or purl those two stitches together. I'm going to give the next stitch a second wrap and turn the work. And I'll show you this one more time. Okay, here's a second stitch from the end. It actually has two wraps. It's your choice if you want to pick up one or both of them. I'm going to pick up both of them. So now I have three stitches there. I'm going to knit three together and give the last stitch a second wrap. Okay, here we are, two stitches from the end on the purl side. Turn the work like this so I can see both the wraps. Pick one up and put it on the needle. Pick the other one up, put it on the needle. Purl those three loops together. Oops, I'm splitting it, which is likely to happen with three stitches there. And then give the last stitch a wrap. And then you'll need to do that until You've picked up stitches all the way to the end, following the pattern, of course. We're getting something very toe-shaped here now. That's how you'll finish up the wrap and turns on the toe. And next up, we're going to talk about unzipping the provisional cast on and starting to knit magic loop in the round. Now that you've finished the short rows on the toe, we're ready to unzip the provisional cast on and start knitting in the round. Let's get right to it. Here is the toe, and again, I'm using really bulky yarn here so I can demonstrate this to you quickly. Um, were you surprised that those short rows ended up 
coming out like this. It looks like a toe. And the red yarn here is my provisional cast on, the crochet chain I started with. Now to get started with unzipping the cast on, set your work like this. And if you feel on your yarn, you'll feel the knot we tied in the slip knot end over here on the left. We want the non-slip knot side over here on the right. And the cord should be coming out of, the, um, the needle cord should be coming out of the stitches on the back. So take this needle, <coughs> excuse me, take this needle over here on the right side. This is the one we're going to be using. And undo this crochet chain. And all you did was pull that last thread through the last loop. And so if you undo that, it will start unzipping. Get yourself down to the first stitch. And it's going to start you off with a problem here because the first stitch is going to be wonky. And wouldn't you know it, I split the yarn in the first stitch. OK. Here's my first stitch right here. The yarn actually, the provisional cast on, actually runs through it. Can you see that? So I'm going to put my yarn in there. My, I'm sorry, put my needle in there and then pull that yarn out. Now that's the only really wonky one. The rest of them are going to be easier. You see there's the provisional cast on. Right under it we see a V. That's the stitch we want to pick up. And if you put your needle in behind and through, the right leg of that V, you've got it. And then you can unzip that stitch, put your leg behind the V of the next one, unzip that stitch. Or if you're like me, I like to go through several at once. Again, I'm just picking up the right leg of the stitch and then unzip the provisional cast on several at a time. Now I was hoping this didn't happen, but I'm kind of glad it did. I must have split a stitch because this isn't going any further. And if you look, you'll find some yarn in the color of your crochet chain that you can snip. It's usually just, it's funny to think that it's usually just barely one little fiber of yarn that's holding the whole thing up. But if you snip it, then it's, you can get the rest of the chain undone. So go back across all of these, picking them up. I can't quite see where my last one is. But I just counted. No, this is freaking me out. There should be one more. Up. Oh, I see it. There we go. I'm glad I was able to see it. This bulky yarn does have its benefits there. Okay. So now we're ready to start knitting in the round. If you turn your work, you'll see that your working yarn is coming from this side over here. I just flipped it. And this is where the fun starts, the fun TV knitting, magic loop knitting. So your working yarn is coming from this stitch here. We get started, it's a little bit different than subsequent rows. Your tail end's coming from the back. Line up your needles like this and pull the back needle long. This is the one we're going to hold in our right hand and knit with. And we're going to be knitting off the left needle just like normal. So you knit across these stitches, okay, and we've reached the end here. So I'm going to turn the work, line up the needles again. Whoops, I need to explain it as I do it. My hands are just on autopilot here. Line up the needles, pull the back needle long, and knit across the stitches on the front needle.
and that's it. I'll show you one more time. This is the beauty of Magic Loop. Turn your work, line up your needles, pull the back needle along, and knit across the stitches on the front needle. And that's going to get you through the whole foot of the sock. You'll want to follow the pattern to know how long of a foot to knit for different sizes. And then next up, we're going to talk about doing the same wrap and turns to create the heel of the sock. If you've finished knitting the foot of your sock and probably watched at least one good movie while you were doing that, we're ready to start the same short row heel turns, same short row turns as we did for the toe for the heel. Let's take a look. Now I've switched to not only an itty bitty sample, but I'm now using the correct weight of yarn and needles that we use, um, that I give you in the pattern. Now you've knit the whole sock, the length you need it, and we're ready to start doing the same wrap and turns on the heel. So I have my needles lined up. I'll pull the back one long. And this is a really simple concept I'm going to show you, which is why I'm using this smaller size. You are going to do the exact same thing you did with the toe on the heel. And it's amazing that the same technique works to turn the heel. But instead of having a provisional cast on, you have these stitches hanging out here on this cord which is going to act this, just like the provisional cast on did in the toe. So I'm going to knit up to the last stitch and start my wraps and turns and then turn the work and you're working from the wrong side and this cord is just hanging there. You're not really knitting magic loop anymore. Whoops. Going from those bulky needles to these Smaller needles is so nice for me. I can knit so much better <laughs> on smaller needles. Okay, you see there? I'm just turning the work and working back and forth while those other stitches are hanging out on the back needle. And I'll go through and get all my wraps finished and then I'll go back through again and pick up those wraps the exact same way I did on the toe. Okay, and when you're finished with that, when you're finished turning the heel, your work will look like this. And I want to show you how to go from knitting the heel to working in the round again, because I give you some instructions in the pattern for just in case. Before you start knitting the two by two rib, um, I tell you to knit a couple of rows plain before you go into the rib. And one reason is because it's nice to have the ribbing up out of the back of your shoe or whatever, but also we can use those extra couple of, of plain knitting rounds to pick up stitches where there might be holes just in case. Now after you knit the heel, turn the heel on this side, you can end up with gaps here. And that's kind of a normal part of toe-up sock knitting. But they're so easy to fix and that's what I want to show you. I'm going to pull the back needle along and knit across these stitches. We're actually going to start knitting in the round again. And when I get to the end of this, I'm in a spot where I can potentially have 
a hole in my sock. So I'm going to pick up an extra stitch here just to help close the gap. And to do that, I find a spot where I think it's not going to pull too much and test it out and go under a couple of, of threads there of yarn. There, that looks good. Wrap it and pull it through, just like when you were picking up stitches in the provisional cast on, and give it a tug, and it should look good. It shouldn't pull and make you know, a different looking hole. It should actually fill up that hole. Line up my needles again, pull that back needle long, and just keep going. We're knitting in the round now. And on this first round, I'm going to pick up stitches like that, and then on the next round, when I get to the end here, I'll knit two together, get to the end here, knit two together to eliminate those extra stitches I picked up so that I have the correct number. And one thing I didn't mention that I always like to do is I use one of these little diaper pin clippy markers and clip it to the sock at the spot between the needles where it is the beginning of my round. And that's how I will remember it's the beginning of my round. Next up, we're going to talk about knitting in two by two rib for the cuff and the special bind off we use to make sure it's really stretchy on the calf. We've got one last little bit of instruction to help you with questions you might have in knitting the cuff. Let's take a quick look. Here's the sock, and we're using two by two rib, which is a really nice stretchy cuff on the sock. And you'll follow your pattern to get up to that spot, but here I am on my teeny tiny little sample, ready to work the two by two rib. Just like with the rest of the sock we've been knitting, I'll pull the back needle along, and I'll start with two knit stitches, which you should be very good at by now. And then to go into the purl stitches, I pull the yarn forward between the two needles and purl two, and then back between the two needles to knit two. Back to knit two. Forward to purl two. And you may need to rearrange the stitches on the needle. I like to always end with purl two. Depending on your size, you might need to slide two of the stitches over to the other needle. If you end with um, knit two, then that means you have to start with purl two on the other side, and that is too much to think about if you're trying to watch TV. Okay, that's working the ribbing. Now I want to show you how to do this really stretchy bind off. You don't want a tight bind off because you'll never get it over your foot, and you don't want something that's so loose that it ends up being kind of fluted. So I have what I call a modified Yobo, yarn over bind off, because it's not a straight yarn over bind off, it's actually two regular bind offs and then a yarn over bind off. And this is what it looks like. Start by knitting two, bind off one, knit one, bind off one, and then yarn over. Just pull the yarn forward between the two needles, bind off over that yarn over, and that's the sequence. So knit one, bind off one, knit one, bind off a second one, yarn over, bind off. It's giving us an extra stitch every two stitches. Knit one, bind off, knit two, bind off, yarn over bind off. And oh, I hope you understand, I'm not ready to bind off on this sock. That was just to show you how to do it. Anyway, good luck on your toe-up Magic Loop socks.